Welcome to our video series where we are going through a Grade 11 IT or Information Technology Prac Exam Paper 1 from November 2024. And we have done Question 1. We're going to move on to Question 2. Just a reminder that in the video description, you will find links to the data files where you can practice. So give it a go before you look at the memo, as well as links to the individual parts of this question, as well as links to the other videos that relate to the other questions. Let's get stuck into it. So if you remember correctly, we are dealing with a Santa Claus theme where the software is all Christmas themed. So we're going to move on to question two. So question two is a database question and they tell us the details of the database. So we've got a database that contains shifts, which stores details about the elves that work in the toy shop. Obviously, the elves need to make toys for Santa to deliver on Christmas Day. So as we can see, there is a unique ID. It's two letters followed by three digits. That's the unique idea. That's the primary key. That's why there's a PK there. The elf name that was working on that shift, that's a text field, which department that elf was working in. For example, they're working in action figures, dolls, vehicles. So there are a couple of options there for department. And then what, which toy they were busy making. So this jingle was making race car for the vehicles department. And this is how many vehicles they made. That's the number made. And this, is the date of the shift. As you can see, they're all in November and a bit in December because obviously they're leading up to Christmas. And the connection code has been done for you. We must use the table called TBL shifts in our code to avoid me having to go back to the database details. I've actually got a screenshot of it here so we can refer to this when doing this code. So let's have a look. I've got the question open here already. The connection's done already. I know you can't see it, but if I run it, you can see that the connection's already there and we can see everything and make that a bit bigger. And there we go. So we can go straight into these buttons and go from there. So let's try it out. We're going to write code for the first button and let's see what it is. Complete the code that displays all the shifts, dates, and the department for those shifts for the elf called Frost. Display these details in the rich edit. So we're just looking for Frost's shifts. So that's one of the elves I think it's not listed there but that's one of the elves so we just want to list the shift date and the department that they were working on on that date so let's go look at that so we're going to come here to the code they've already put the heading in for us so we are going to use this TBL shifts ADO table so if you remember when you're going through a database table it's TBL shifts dot first and then it's while not TBL shifts dot end of file do and then we will have a begin and end. And before the end, we'll have TBL shifts dot next. That is always going to be the three steps when you are going through each and every record in a database, which is what we're going to do. And all we are doing is we are looking if the elf name matches the word frost. So we're looking for the elf field. So we're going to say if TBL shifts. Now to get the field, we put square brackets and then inside there, we put the name of the field that we're referring to. So we want the elf field to equal to the text frost. If that is true, then we want to display, if you remember correctly, the date of the shift and the department. So that's the shift date, one word, and department. Remember, you must use the names exactly like they are in the database. So if I come here, we're going to display in the rich summary, if I remember correctly. We're going to say that rich summary lines.add and we're going to add whatever is in you can be quite quick by just copying these add that and then if you look here at the diagram you see there's a bit of a tab almost so let's go put in a tab so let's go put in a tab over there so we're going to put in a plus a hash nine plus some press space now now i've just copied and pasted that so we're going to change that field to the shift date and we're going to change that part there to the department so if it matches that, then we'll display it. So I think we just need to put a semicolon at the end and then it should work. So there we go. If it matches, so we can go to the first record. We're not at the end. If it's a frost match, display that. Go to the next one. If it's a frost match, display it. So it should just do that all the time. Let's run it. Ah, so here we have an issue because we've got a date. So that's a date field. If you remember correctly, over here, it actually says that the shift date over there is a date data type. So that means we can't simply just display the shift date like that. We're going to actually convert. That's a string, so that's fine. But this needs to be converted from a date to a string for it to work. So that, that's a little tricky part of this question. We're going to convert that to a string. Let's run it now. And there we go. I think it's all correct. It looks exactly like it should be.
Let's move on to the new question of 2.2. Complete the code that displays the total number of batteries that are needed for remote controls. Display the total number of toys made. All toys that contain the word remote in their name and display the total number of of numbers to determine how many batteries are needed okay so this is slightly more tricky because remember the remote control toys need batteries but we're not just looking for the word remote we're looking at remote and there are 120 of those toys and each one of them will needs a battery so we're looking for that word but we're looking for that number and i think that's what they are displaying if you look there they they are displaying so let's just display the numbers see if we get the same numbers and then we can do the total so let's do that first. So we're going to come here to batteries to buy and we're just going to go through. They gave me a sum variable, which I'm not going to worry about now. And let's just go through. And actually, because we're going through each and every record, we can actually just come here and copy and paste this just to save time. So I'm going to copy and paste it. And so now we're not looking for the elf. We're looking for the word remote to be somewhere inside of the toy name because it could be remote control plane, could be remote control car we don't actually know what the actual toy name will be but we just know the word remote will be there and they say contain the word remote all, all the toys that contain the word remote so remote somewhere in it it's not equal to it it's somewhere in it so then we are looking inside of the toy name if you remember correctly it's toy name one word that is correct that's what we want so we are looking for the toy name and that must not equal to remote we actually want the word remote to be somewhere in it. So I'm actually going to use the word pause. If the position of the word remote is somewhere inside of toy name. So if I do that rather. So how do I know if it's in there? Well, if remote is inside of toy name, it'll be a number. It'll be a one or a two or three. So as long as it's not equal to naught, then we know that the word remote is somewhere in the toy name. If that's true, then we want to display. What do we want to display? We want to display the number of toys made. Number made, one word. So we can say number made. And we don't need all this other stuff here. This from the previous question. So there we go. So if it's got the word remote in it, display the numbers made. Let's test it to see that that works. We should get three numbers. Ah, because we still got the date to string. We must take that out. We mustn't convert it to a date to string and take away the bracket. So there we go. So when you copy and paste, just be careful of those little things. So let's try it again rather. Batteries to there we go. So we got the three numbers. That's fine. So we're on track. So we're definitely getting the right values there. Then we just need to put lines and total it. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum these numbers. So I've got a sum variable. We're going to initialize the sum variable to zero. And then every time we find a match, not only are we going to say that we're going to display it, we are also going to say our sum is equal to our our sum plus this number of shifts made. So if I take this and copy it, that number must be added on to the R sum. And then at the end of all of our going through all the, the fields in the database, only then can we then do something like this, where we're going to say, we're first going to put those lines. Do you remember? There's these little lines over there. There's about six of them. So we're going to go here and say, okay, we're going to put some lines here. So there we go. And then we're going to do this all again. But this time we're going to put our sum. But remember, our sum's a integer. So it's converted from an integer to a string so that it fits into the rich edit control. We go through and we find the word remote somewhere in the word toy name. Then we display the numbers made and we add that number onto our sum. And then at the end, we display this our sum. We should get the same value. So why do we have it? Oh, because I'm still running the code there, Mr. Long. Please stop that. Then you can run it. We're going to say batteries to bar. Boom, there we go. And we've got the same numbers that they've got. Perfect. I think that question is done. Okay, code has been provided to prompt the user for a shift ID. So I think that's been done already. If we come here, go to the next button. There we go. We've already got an ID there. That's the ID that we need to delete. So code has been provided to prompt the user for the shift ID. Complete the code that searches the shifts table for that ID and then removes it from the table. Suitable feedback must be displayed showing show message. If it's not found, then a suitable message must be displayed. So we also optimize the code so that it doesn't continue looking for the shift ID after it's found. So there's only one shift ID like that. So we delete a unique record. So once we've deleted it and found it, we don't actually need to look anymore. So for that, we're going to need a thin ghost variable or boolean to tell us when we need to stop looking. So I'm going to make a thin ghost variable called be found. 
and we are going to do all the same stuff again very similar to what we did here so let's just shift and paste this and i actually want to delete all of the stuff in the middle so i don't get mixed up like last time so there's the algorithm but we are going to have a be found variable which we're going to set to false which means we haven't found what we're looking for that will be set true when we find what we're looking for so we're going to look for this shift id so we're going to say if I'm going to copy that and paste that. If the shift ID, make sure that you've spelt it exactly like it should be in the database. If I come here and check over here, shift ID, yes, it's exactly like that. If the shift ID is the same as this input that we've just gotten, then we have found what we are looking for. Then the first thing I'm going to do is say be found is equal to true. We have found what we are looking for. If we found, what are we doing with that one that we found? If we find the shift, it removes it from the table. It deletes it. It's gone. So we're going to then say, okay, we found what we're looking for. We are at the right spot. This is the one that we don't want anymore. So the shifts table dot delete. We literally just say delete it. It's gone. Now here is a part where a lot of people don't get the marks. It says here a suitable feedback must be displayed once it has been removed. We must have a show message here and say, hey, we removed it. So show message. And I'm going to actually put this ID as part of the message and say this ID has been deleted. So that's my message. Let's just put a space there as well. Okay. So that's what happens when we delete it. Then we go to the next. But remember with delete, whenever we are deleting a record, we are either deleting it or we are moving to the next record. So I'm going to say else move to the next record. We always do first, well not in the file.next, but when we delete, we always do an else next. Because when we delete, it automatically deletes and moves to the next. So we want to do that. Okay, so we're going to do that. If be found is still false at this point of the game after this loop if be found is still a false that means we didn't find it we didn't find that shift because it says here if it's not found then a super message must be displayed so if it's not found then we must show a message and i'll just copy this message because we're going to say this id was not found so there's our message now the other thing that we are missing is it says there it must be optimized we mustn't continue looking if we find so the moment we find it we want this loop to finish, which means we not only want to go until the end, but the other option is when this is found. So while we are not at the end and while B found is equal to false, then we must keep looking. So we, we're not at the end and we haven't found it. Keep looking. The moment one of those things happen, then we can stop looking. But just to be sure, remember with and, we should probably put brackets around this and we should put brackets around that whole part there. So it doesn't do not of this and that. So it's not of this. So while we're not at the end, keep looking. While we haven't found it, keep looking. The moment we find it, it doesn't matter if we're not at the end. Well, the moment we find it, the moment this becomes true, stop the loop. If we get to the end, it doesn't matter if this hasn't been found yet. If we get to the end, stop looking and then we move over here. So that's how we optimize it. So let's run it. So we're going to find a shift. Let's do KL199 and I'm going to click OK. It has been deleted. So if I find that shift again, it should say it was not found because it's the only one that was there, so it's deleted. So there we go. And we can restore our database to get back to the original state. Okay, so our 11 KL119 should be back. That's our question 2.3 done. Now let's move on to 2.4. 2.4, complete the code that displays the most items made in one shift for the action figure department. Display the values in the register. So display action figure and the most items made. So we were looking at our table. We're going through if it's action figure, go figure out what's the biggest number. This is a max problem. We want to find the biggest number for action hero figure, if I'm correct. Action figure. So action figure, we're looking for the biggest number for that. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to go to question 2.4 and they've already got the heading for us. We're going to do something very similar where we copy all this paste it just to save time and we can delete all the stuff in the middle and we actually don't need that part anymore dot first while not in the file dot next it's always those sequences so now i need to record an r max of type integer finding the biggest value so i'm going to say r max we're going to default r max to a really really small number opposite of what it is so let's make it a really small number if tbl shifts if the numbers made, if you look at if this number made is bigger than my R max, then that becomes my new R max. So if the numbers made, I think it's number made, if I'm correct. Number made, not numbers. So it's not plural. So we're going to take that away. If numbers made is a bigger number than R max, which the first one will be, it has to be, everything's bigger than that. If it is, then this means that 
my numbers mate is a is a better value it's a new champion so we're going to say our max is going to change to this value if we find the first value but we also want to find own we only want to do this if it matches the action figure department we're going to go if the numbers made and tbl shifts department is equal to i'm going to put this on a new line just so we can see it we are looking for the word action figure if it's the action figure if it's equal to action figure so remember with the and we want to put brackets around yeah and then brackets around here so if the record we at is action figure and the number made is bigger than my max then that's a new max value once we've got that then right at the end once the loop's done and we're done at the end here whatever is in our max will be whatever's the biggest number so then we can display in the rich edit we can display something like that so i'm going to copy that paste it we're going to say the word action figure and we're going to put in like a hash nine because i think we want a bit of a gap if you look here there's a bit of a gap there which is nice we're going to put that there and then we're going to put in the value for our max but our max is an integer so we're going to convert it from an int to a string okay so this is the algorithm for a max problem so we assume max is a very, very small number we go through each record in the database if the number that we're looking at is bigger than the max value then we reset that max value to whatever that number is because that's a better bigger number and at the same time we also check into action figures so we're only doing the max number of the action figures and then we display it i think that works and we are looking for a result of action figure 120 so if we do that action figure 120 fantastic so that is done so now 2.5 is connected to question 2.4 modify this code that displays the most items made in one shift for each department we only did action figure now we need to do all the departments and they tell me that they've got an array for us called an array department which has got all of the names of the different departments in an array so there's a couple ways we can do this we can do this the very long way where we literally just copy this code and paste it again and we change the word action figure and so on. but we technically are doing action figure correctly but we're technically doing this six times. So I'm going to repeatedly do this code. So I'm going to make a looping variable. Let's call it R. I'm going to say 4R is going to equal to 1 to 6 because there's six different values. And what are we doing? We are going to go from 1 to 6 and we're going to do all of this every single time. And we're going to do the six times. So let's just see what that does. It's going to display action figure six times, which is fine. But when I do it the second time, I'm not actually looking to see if it's action figure. I'm looking to see if it's going to be, if you look here, the first value in the array department array. Then the second time will be in the second value in the array. So whatever our value is, is we actually are not comparing it with that. We're comparing it with the array department at position R. So let me explain that. So you can see oh, right at the top here, there's this array. So position one's that, position two is that, position three is that. Yeah. When R is a one, compare with position one in the array, which is action figure. But when we do this loop again, the second time, we're going to do all this again, the second time. But this time it's comparing it to the department at position two, which is the board games department. So let's try that. We run it. Okay, so now we've got different numbers. That's good. The numbers are different, but we obviously the labels are not the same. And so we want to come here. We don't want to say action figure every time. We actually want to say whatever's in array department is actually what we want to display. So I'm going to replace this action figure with the word department at position R. And that's within the loop. Make sure that be inside the loop. So we're displaying that six times. So just by doing those three changes, we've now just got it working perfectly. I think it's done everything. There we go. It's done exactly what we want. So all we needed to do was we put a loop from one to six encompassing everything. When we check the department, we just checked it with the value in the array at whatever loop we at. And we displayed the name of the department. We displayed the name of the array at that particular point of the loop. And so by doing that, those three changes, we've literally made it work for all the cases. And that's got us those six marks. That's easy. Six marks for those three changes. That's amazing. I think that's done. That's all 40 marks of the database question done. Fantastic. We can now move on to question three. For more videos on grade 11 RT, as well as some theory concepts, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, at Long RT and Cat for practical and at Long Computer Terms for theory and our TikTok at Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.